So recently on our show, we started checking pH or acidity level of our brews. And it's actually turned out to be a very useful thing. And a lot of people have expressed concern that maybe the meter is not the way to go. Maybe you should use pH test strips. And I've gone back and forth. I've always said, oh, well, wouldn't the test strips be less accurate because these just go whole numbers, right? And in general, we like to be between like four and 5.5. But a half a point shouldn't be all that difficult to tell, right? Or is it? And on top of that, there's calibration of the machine. You don't have to calibrate these. You just use it. And on top of that, there's the electrode. Should it be wet? Should it be dry? It ships dry. But once you get it wet, it's supposed to stay wet. And there's a certain solution that you use, use to keep it wet. And it just gets into this whole big thing. And I'm like, could it just be easier to use little pieces of paper? You know, like it, it just... Maybe. So we have a little test here. <sighs> One known and two unknowns, right? The known is water. We know the pH of water should be right around seven. So that's kind of our standard and we'll see how much they deviate from that. And then we have some apple cider vinegar and then we have pina colada mead. Cause you know, why not, right? And we'll test them all. So let's start off with pouring pina colada mead because that's just how we do things around here. So... Mm, it's nice and clear. Yeah, it is. Derica plans on drinking that, so... Yeah. I'm not going to be drinking the apple cider vinegar. No. Okay, so we have our pH meter and it's been cleaned. And what I want to do is turn it on. Oh, you know what? Let's go with the water first. Now remember, it should say seven. We have not calibrated this in a while, so it could be pretty far off. They tend to take a few minutes sitting in the liquid. Try not to stall too much. I could just cut this too. So this is our filtered water. Um, so it shouldn't have like chloramines and chlorine and things like that in it. It's reading 7.3. Yeah. That's a little surprising, but maybe it's right. Now, this is where the accuracy part's gonna come in. I'm probably not gonna be able to say 7.3 on the, yeah. the strips, but it should be good enough to give us an indication. 7.4, just went to 7.4. And then back down to 7.3. Cause you. Uh, all right, you're right. I'll give it another minute. Patience. I have none. It's amazing I can be a brewer and let stuff sit. You know how I do that? I forget that I have them. That's how I do it. 7.5. This is a little weird. I don't think it's supposed to be 7.5. So maybe it is out of calibration. Yeah, 7.6. 7. I'm curious if the documentation here talks about keeping it moist. When testing a solution, gently shake the pH meter to remove any tiny air bubbles that may have accumulated on the electrode. Is that gentle? Yes. 7.7. 7.8. Wow. I'm thinking this is wrong. <laughs> this could be off really weird um, and be completely inaccurate. Yeah, it says before use or after extended storage, remove the cap and soak the electrode in distilled water. Yeah. Wipe it down with a cotton cloth and shake it to make sure all water is out. Yeah. It does not so it actually say to leave keep it, it wet. In moisture. Okay, 7.8. I'm stopping it there. 7.8. I'm questioning you. Yeah, I'm questioning all of it. I'm questioning everything right now. <laughs> so I'm going to get out one of these strips of paper. One thing I will say about this, it's 240 strips and it, because it's a whole container of them. It was like six bucks on Amazon. I mean, that's beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. They don't actually have instructions. They just have, you know, uh, basic, like, I think it's Chinese to American uh, translation. But I know from using these types of things in the past, you want to dip it in there and wait about a minute to get the full result. They're all just different packages. Yeah, of the same I was thing. just checking. Okay, so I'm going to dip it in and wait. So it should read in the green up here. Let's just see. Normally, I know for the aquarium test strips, is you're supposed to wait a full minute. I'm waiting. 
I was surprised I didn't tell you how long you're supposed to wait because that can change. Mm -hmm. These are the cheap ones, so that is a possibility. But interestingly enough, even before the minute is up, it's reading like between eight and nine. Between eight and nine, so their pH meter might be fine. Our water just might be really base, really, yeah. really alkaline. Yeah, that's definitely reading more towards the nine. I would say. Wow, uh, it's hard to say. It's it's it, it's it's higher than that. Yeah, let's just say that. Let me get something to put these on. Now on to apple cider vinegar. Turn our meter on, put it in the, in the vinegar, and gently agitate it to release any bubbles. And let that sit for an entirely long time. <laughs> oh, you know, when yeah, you really... It's kind of more than eight now. It's close to eight. Yeah. Yeah, it's really... Which, that was reading 7.8. So yeah. eight, yeah, it's it, they're reading pretty much the same. Which, that's the point of this, is not to know, are they perfectly accurate? Because we know they're not. It's kind of biased. You have to go by the color thing. But is it better than using the meter and having to worry about, is the meter calibrated or wrong or whatever? That's what I'm getting at. Because if I know I need to be between four and, say, six, I can look at that and go, oh, yeah, that's between four and six. Because that's as much as we need. We don't yeah. need to know, is it 4.2? Is it 4.457? Yeah. We just need to know, is it in the range? So that's kind of what got me thinking. And a lot of people have asked recently. So this, I like stuff like this. Sometimes ultimate accuracy is not important. Yep. You just need to know, is it good or good or not? It's kind of a yes, no. It's a very binary system. Oh. <laughs> um, 3.5. Yeah, it seems like it's just... It's, it's stalling out at 3.5. It's not going any further. All right. Let me... That's going to need to get rinsed out now, though. Yeah. Now, one thing I will say is that the color delineations actually seem pretty good, especially for the range that we'd mostly be working in. If you look, it's like red, orange, yellow, then green. That's pretty much the range you're going to work in. So if you can tell the difference between orange and yellow and red, you're probably going to be okay with these. So I'm ready for this one. Of course, if you're colorblind, particularly in the green spectrum, then this might not this be the might way not for be the you. way to go. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that I'd do this if I I would just set that down on the paper towel now. I'm going to set it down on the paper towel now. And we were 3.5 using the meter. It's like smack between 3 and 4 already. So, so far, the test strips are proving themselves to be very good. Now, the other thing that makes me want to use the meter is these are disposable. So that means you're going to have to replace them. But the meter, you constantly have to get more solution to keep it calibrated. So it's kind of six and one half dozen of the other. Sure, but I, I think what our main part of the test was, was there going to be a big difference between the strips and the meter since we haven't calibrated our meter recently? Yeah, and I'm not seeing a big difference. They seem to be right, within the right, same. Yep. I mean, when I look at that, that is right between three and four. Yep. Which is exactly 3.5. So, yeah. So far, two for two. Okay. And last is going to be the pina colada mead. Do you like pina coladas? She does, actually. She also likes getting caught in the rain. I do. You didn't do the shaky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gently shake to dislodge air bubbles. Gently. Okay, this is a little higher than I thought. I figured it'd be more acidic. It's sitting around 5.2 right now, but it's still got a little bit to go. You know, while that's doing its thing, I'm going to get the pH strip and do yeah, that because there you go. there's no reason they can share. to not do it at the same time. <laughs> that just occurred to me. I wish I thought of that uh, before hey. we started, but you know. You know. Um, so yeah, we're looking at the orangey to yellow at this point. And I want to just do this quick because you're going to drink this. Okay. And right off the bat, it's showing me in the orangey to yellow range. Yeah, it, it's pretty much matching that. 5.2. That's 5. Oh, yeah. It's sl uh, I'd say it's actually slightly darker than 5, so it might be reading a little bit below. But it also hasn't been a minute yet. Yeah. But that last one is definitely right in between the 3 and the 4. And the green... Should I shake it some more in case I didn't sure. shake it enough? The green, I'm going to say the green might be between, it's a little over eight. So 
they were within half a point on the on the water, and they were spot, spot on. on for the acid, which is vinegar. It's that that to me is a that very valid test because that's something that you want to watch out for. So if it's that kind of accurate, that low, yeah, then it's great. Five point two. It's here. it's not changing anymore. So five point two, and if I check this guy out. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing a little more yellow than five, just, just a little bit, Yep. not quite six. So yeah, it's just a little bit over five. So I'm going to call that, I mean, proven. I don't want to say busted because not, we didn't bust anything. Nope. Yeah. Nothing is busted. But <laughs> if you want to use pH strips, I think they're a very valid alternative yeah. to a pH meter. Yeah. Um, they don't need any extra to make them work. Like I say, 240 strips for six bucks. That's hard to beat. Yeah. I think you'd have to go, to get 240 tests on that, I think you'd have to go through a little bit more in solution, which it's cheap too, but over time could add a, could actually add up to more than the pH strips. Now they're not as accurate. You have to do a little interpretation. Sure. But I think for, what, for the purpose we need them for, I think they work. Right. Now, granted, this is a low end pH meter. We didn't oh, yeah. get one of the expensive ones. You can, you can go as high as you wish to. Yeah, they do have very expensive ones. Uh, so that may have a difference, but we don't have that to test. So there yeah, you. this one was like 20 bucks. Um, we'll have links to both of these items in the description of this video. Yep. But uh, in the meantime, guys, feel free to use either one. They both work and um, enjoy the fruits of your labor when you're done. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.